Hey guys, welcome back to our course. This is now the fourth episode in which we create our very first script. So let's get right into it. Um, we have our script folder right here in our project window. I am going to delete the one we've called rotate. And uh, we're going to start with a fresh script. So guys, if you haven't really coded before, that's not such a big deal. We're going to go over some really basic stuff and also just uh, try to move on from there and try to get you like a basic understanding of how it works inside of Unity because it's a little bit different uh, than just standard coding in Visual Studio, like standard C-sharp. There is few difference between just coding for uh, normal C-sharp in Visual Studio and coding for Unity. They have different entry point, which uh, we will get into in a moment. But the first thing you will do here is you are going to create a new asset, a C-sharp asset, just like I did. And you're going to call this um, whatever you want, really. I'm going to call this my first script. And we're going to open it up by simply double clicking on it. And it's going to open up in either uh, Moto Develop or Visual Studio, depending on which you are using by default. Okay, so the very first thing you're going to see with a fresh installation of Unity and um, just booting up a script is that you have a lot of information already just to, to grasp. And uh, I don't really want to get too much into the public class here and uh, the using statement at the very top. I don't think that you need to understand what this does for now. Um, just tell yourself that everything that is wrapped in between the uh, fifth line here, the, the bracket on the fifth line and also the bracket on the 15th, is um, your object, is your script. Your very component you just created, it contains all of that. Now what are those? Those are function. There, there is actually two functions here. There's one called start and the other one is called update. And just on top of those function, they give you comments. Now the way you write comments in C Sharp is by doing a double slash. So by writing double slash, I can now write a comment. And this is not going to affect my code at all. So everything that you see in green here is never going to affect my code. Now if you want to write a multi-line comment, you do a slash star and then you can uh, write on multiple line and you're just uh, writing comments on multiple lines and to close this off you do star and slash so you do it the other way around okay so that's pretty much it for the comments right but we're not going to be talking about comments too much here I mean that, we pretty much just covered it already so um, let's talk about those functions like I said we have the void start and also the void update and on top of those there is a comment that says use this for initialization and then the, the update is um, saying that everything inside of the update is called once per frame. Now, when you're reading code and when you're writing code, you do it the same exact way as when you read the book. However, the book might tell you to jump to a chapter and then come back and then jump to another chapter and then come back. So it's really just a book that you read uh, from top to down. And uh, sometimes it tells you to go back somewhere and then back to where you were in the book actually. So let me just try to give you an example here. I'm going to show you one of the comments we have in Unity. Inside of the brackets that they give me for the start, right here, I can actually put it on another line that doesn't really matter. Inside of the bracket for the start, I'm going to write a debug.log. Now, um, you should have some IntelliSense. You can't really see it in the video, but there's a little window popping just beneath my cursor telling me uh, information, like autocomplete information. You should have that on your side as well. Okay, so. Uh, debug.log is a comment that you send to Unity and it is going to write something down in the console. Now I'm simply going to write something like hello world in between quotes and we're going to have a look at that. Right, so my script right now, my first script is not on any cubes so it's never actually being run. It's simply a script that is laying somewhere inside of my um, project window in my asset folder. It's only there, but it's never really called in my game. It's never really used. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select any cube, really, and just drag and drop my script on the cube. And as you can tell, there is like this one here. The, um, there is a script that doesn't really have any reference, and that is because I've deleted the rotate script, and it's still kind of attached. So I'm going to get rid of that by doing a remove component. Okay. Now, at this point, when I start the game, nothing happens like physically, nothing happens visually, but if you have a look at the console down here, it says hello world. 
Why does it do that, really? Let's have a double click on the console. When you double click on the console, it usually just brings up to uh, the piece of code that is concerned. In this case, since we did a debug.log, the, uh, the log that we see in the console has been called by this line. Right. So, um, notice that this thing here, if I clear it and I play again, it is being written at the moment I press on play. And that is what um, the start means. That means this line, well, whatever is inside of these brackets here, the 8 and the 10 bracket, everything in between those brackets, those two brackets here, is going to be ran when I press on play. And that is because my cube object, the one that contains my component, my first script component, is on the scene and it only appears when I press on play. And it is because my cube object, the one that contains my first script component, is on the scene already. So when I press on play, it just looks for every single object look for every single component and call their start function. Okay, now let's have a further look uh, by writing another line of code. So I'm simply going to duplicate this line, put it just beneath it, and let's see which one is being called first. So like I said, this is just like a normal book, you read it from top to bottom, and it says hello world and then hello too. So as you can tell, it does it in this order, this line first and then this line. Next thing we're going to check out is the update. Now, the update is a little bit different. So you see how the, um, the start function, it only calls start once. So it only reads these line only once. Now, if you go inside of the update and you just type in something like hello, you are going to look at the console down here and you're pretty much going to be spam. And the reason is, um, this is called every single frame, which means if your game is running at 60 frames a second, it's going to write down hello 60 times every second in your console. And that is really useful because you need this kind of logic, you need this kind of update loop um, to have some logic going on in your game, such as uh, check out for my inputs. If my inputs are actually pressed, then please move the character every single frame. So the update is going to be something that we use quite a lot and it's going to be like really really useful in the future. Now there is something I need to tell you guys first. Um, if you have a look at those two functions here, it pretty much just said void start and void update and they were already there by default. The reason is those calls are really special. And uh, let me just show you another one. We're going to create our own function here. We're going to call it uh, snake update and type in something like debug.log hello snake now I want you to see the console down here nothing happens and that is because now these two objects they have something special the way they are named here uh, makes it so when you actually have an object like a game object and that game object is initialized it's going to call the start function uh, for every single component on that object and that is only because it's named this exact way. So if you're writing up your own code, if you're just starting from scratch, um, you have to make sure that you give this a capital S letter, you give this a um, capital U, you just write it the same exact way as it's written here. And that's because if you don't, it's simply not going to work. Let's have a look here. I'm going to put my debug.log hello snake inside of the update and just give it a uh, minimize U. And if you press play now, it's not being called. And that is because Unity is actually calling the update function, but there is no update function being defined in this code, uh, with a capital U at least. So it's simply not going to run anything. And there is multiple function that actually does that. So you could write down some other functions such as void on enable, and that is being called when your object is actually toggled on. If it's actually off in your game, you can toggle it on. On enable is being called um, when you turn it back on, basically. But uh, enough about that. That those are callback. It's a little bit more advanced. And when you need those, you're usually just going to Google. Since they have some very specific name, you pretty much have to Google it at least once just to know how you actually type it. All right. So enough about this callback function. Let's actually have a look at our snake update. So I'll put my debug.log back in the snake update. And uh, snake update is something that Unity did not define, so it's something we've made on our own by simply typing in void snake update, and then uh, inside of the snake update, it just reads from the first bracket here 
to the last one. Now, how exactly do we get Unity to run this code? Now, remember that when I said earlier that you read code just like you read a book, but it might be told to go to a chapter sometime, um, you have to start at your entry point. In this case, we have two of those. So at the start, we have an entry point. So when we actually press play on the engine, we start from here. And then every single frame, we have a new entry point here in the update. So every single frame afterward, we can be typing code over and over and over again in the update. Let's actually call the snake update only once for now. And the way we do this is that we put it somewhere that our code is going to be written and you write it with the parentheses at the end. So now, since there are some parentheses here, you know that this is a function. This is really specific to function and you just use the same exact name you've used when you declared it. So this way, if we have a look really quick at the flow, I'm going to help ourselves by creating some uh, debug.log next to it. Pre snake update, and just after that, post snake update. And now, if we go in our engine, and since our component is on an object here, we press on play, you're going to be seeing pre snake update, and then hello snake, and then post snake update. If we have a look at the code again, as you can tell, we start from, of course, our entry point here, which is the start. So you read line number nine, then when you're on line number 10, they actually tell you to jump to this function. And then you read what is inside of that function. So we're now reading line 22. Then once this is completed, you can tell with the, uh, the closing bracket, we go back to where we were. So now back at line 11. So we did a jump here from line nine to line 22 and then line 11. And that is pretty much how a function works. Uh, it, it is really basic. There is more to function than just this. Now this very basic function could be seen as simply just duplicating. Uh, so we only have this line here. We could be replacing snake update with this line instead. It's the same exact thing. Now something really cool about function is that you can call them more than once. So instead of just typing our code again, let's just assume that we had like multiple lines of debug.log in the snake update and we just want to like receive multiple message. Uh, instead of just typing them all over and over again, say here, we can just call our snake update again. And this way it is going to do line nine, line 26, then line 13, and then 26 again. So as you can tell, we can call it multiple time. And if we press play on the game, you are going to be able to see just that. So pre snake update, hello snake, post snake, and then hello snake again. So we simply call our function once more and this is really a basic function there is like more to it but right now that's really all you need to know and this is where I'm gonna be ending today's episode and that is because um, else I would have like a 40 minute episode a 40 minute lesson and I think that's a little bit too much we have a lot to grasp today we have a lot of concept to grasp um, reading code reading function redirection in the flow of your code and tomorrow we're gonna to be talking about something even more in depth we're gonna be talking about um, variables and keeping some value in memory so guys uh, just make sure you understand what's going on right now because starting from here we're gonna go higher and higher every single video so guys thank you so much for watching you can support me on Facebook by just leaving a like on the Facebook page uh, leaving a like on the video of course leaving a comment if you have any question and also support me on patreon if you would like to see more courses or more tutorial thanks so much for watching guys and I'll be seeing you in the next one